Hello and welcome to the Ermin Matters podcast. My name is Mikey. Show notes for this episode can be found at erminpodcast.blogspot.com. We have a Ravelry group, so come say hi. You can find it at Ermin Matters Podcast on Ravelry under the groups. You can find me on Ravelry as Mikey Jr. That's M I K I E J R, and on Instagram as Mikey underscore Jr. So let's get started. What I am wearing today is my first and only sweater, and I'm really proud of it. There's a few imperfections, but, you know, that's to be expected with every first sweater, I'm guessing. It is Brigade by Todd Gawkin. It is a bottom-up sweater, and it's a, it's a paid-for pattern. Uh, check it out. I knit it out of Cascade 220 Superwash in the Redwine Heathers colorway, and it's so warm and so squishy. Uh, I made a few modifications to the pattern. The asymmetrical neck placket is supposed to, there's a zipper that's supposed to start here and go all the way up. I omitted that and instead left it open and you can probably see right there. From here to here, I just mat mattress stitched all that together so that way I just have this little neck flare and it works perfectly for me. It's not too tight, it's it's nice and it breathes very nicely and because it doesn't get too cold here, I didn't think I'd need, you know, that really tight, you know, zippered up turtleneck feel. Um, I might add a button and, and a little loop later if I feel that I need it, but I haven't so far, so. I finished it um, in August of last year around my birthday, and it was a great birthday present to me. I, I got to wear my first hand at sweater. It took longer than I wanted to, only because, as you can see, the sleeves are all ribbed, and the rib follows all the way up. There's, the body is mostly stockinette. There's a there's a rib panel on the side that goes up, which helps, you know, form and pull everything together. Uh, if you're looking for a nice, good, you know, guy sweater pattern, I highly suggest checking a look at this. Uh, link will be in the uh, doobly-doo. I have a finished object this week, and I'm very excited about that. I didn't think I was going to have one, but I cast this pattern on... I think Wednesday last week, just to, you know, have some mindless knitting and finished it Sunday night. Yes, Sunday night. And I could not be happier with it. This is another Bankhead hat. And as you can see, this one is not slouchy like the one I had last week. I wanted a, a tighter fitting beanie. That, that wasn't so, you know, casual. And, and this, this yarn is, is a bit thicker than, than the one I used there. So it's definitely warmer. It is definitely bright and colorful. I love the pops of greens and, and all the blues. There's a little bit of purples in there. You can see some dark navy spots. Um, the yarn is Malabrigo Rios in the Azules colorway, or Azules colorway. I'm not sure how, which way that's pronounced, but A-Z-U-L-E-S, Azulis, Azules. It's a great, great wearing yarn. It's a great pattern. Easily memorizable and crank one out in a few days. Great for gift knitting. Great for, you know, guys, girls, kids, everyone. It's a good go-to pattern. I will probably be making more of these throughout the year for my gift box just so I have things for birthdays and Christmas and stuff like that. And yeah, I mean, I can't say enough good things about this pattern. I've made four now, I believe, and everyone has been fantastic. It's a no fuss pattern, like I said, easily memorizable. This was the first pattern I ever did that had a twisted rib brim and my future hats that I do I'll probably substitute for this twisted rib brim because I really like how it fits and how it snugs up to the head but yeah great pattern 
This is a free pattern on Ravelry. It is by Susan Gourlay. And again, that's Malabrigo Rios in the Azulis colorway. I, my work's in progress. I don't have too many. My Scottish Nightmare Shawl got put on the back burner for now because I'm working on the test knit for Josh Ricks. Um, can't talk too much about it, but I love this shawl. It's going to be one of my favorites to wear and to knit again once I'm finished with it. There are some new to me techniques that I've never done before and never seen before, which is really exciting. And then there's some very typical Josh stuff going on in shaping that you know gets thrown into the mix too so it, it's very familiar but very new as well and I like that I'm really looking forward to when this pattern comes out in the future so that way you know I can talk about it more and show off the finished object but like I said last week it's in my bags by Terry bag which is a great bag I, I love it um, yeah, Scottish Nightmare got put on hold because I don't like to work on too many of the same type of project at once. So since I have one Josh Shaw going, I didn't want to work on another Josh Shaw at the same time just because I get very distracted and I can't focus on one over the other. So I'm going to finish this one because it's closer to being done. And then once that's done, I'll get back to work on the Scottish Nightmare and then hopefully that will be done in the next week or two. So I'm looking forward to that. My Hexi Puffs got no work this week. Um, I have another project going that's not knitting or spinning that I might talk about in a little bit. But yeah, that's taking up a lot of my time at, in terms of crafting and just brain power. So um, Hexi Puffs didn't get any love. But I did cast on another project because I can't help myself. My friend Andrew, he saw the 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 bag I made for my other friend, the the yellow and black one with the diamonds on it, and he was really interested in having one for him. Um, well, similar but different. Um, I'm using a pattern I drafted, and I'm using Knit Picks palette in the ivy colorway, and that is pretty true to color yeah that's pretty true to color it's a good yarn um, I have a bunch of palette in my stash and it's one of my go-to yarns for bags like this um, I can do it on size two zeros or two aughts up to US twos and have a great fabric stitch definition is beautiful in color work it washes well it wears well can't say enough good things about this yarn. Again, I'm doing yellow. Um, this is Knit Picks Palette in Canary. It's a very bright, vibrant yellow. It shows well in pretty much everything, so I have a bunch of that. And I'm not too far into the bag, as you can tell. I have an inch or two done. You can see I have a you know, a diagonal and star border at the top, then a vine motif going on. And let me see if I can find my, there it is. The back of the bag will, will look like that. And again, I'll have the stars and the di diagonals, the vine, the diamonds, and the vine at the bottom. And I'll do my standard three needle bind off at the bottom at tassels. This is the front or what will be the front. So again, stars and diagonals, vine, wake knot, and then the vine again. It's for me, it's a pretty standard pattern, just a lot of stranded color work. There's a lot of floats that I have to, to manage and, and carry on the back. So that takes a little bit of extra time than I would I ideally like, but it's something I can get done. I'll probably have it done in the next week or two. I'm hoping for Friday or Saturday, but I don't think that's a realistic goal. I would like it to be a realistic goal, but this other project is taking so much time that I don't think it will be, unfortunately. But it is living in my 
Folly and Nonsense project bag. It is a square project bag that, as you can see, has like little ribbons and a button that slides down. Travels nicely. It's got these really pretty autumnal mushroom colors going on. The inside is a nice brown and has a pocket for all my notions and scissors. If I haven't said, I'm using my Knitter's Pride Carbons on these. And I love my Knitter's Pride Carbons. They are pointy where they need to be pointy. Um, they are grippy where they need to be grippy. They slip when they need to slide. They are my perfect go-to double point needles for smaller projects. If I had the carbons in sizes I would need for socks, I would be doing all of my socks on carbons, but unfortunately I don't have those yet. But I will, because I love these needles. Like I said, they are my go-to needles. I have had zero issues with them at all. And you know, they have a little bit of flex um, because they're not all the way metal. They don't get too cold on your hands. They don't get too warm that the points are just pointy enough without being so pointy. I can do, you know, knit three togethers or, you know, knit two together, pa pass slip stitch over. I can do stuff like that and have no problems. I haven't tried these with stuff like noops or any other stitch like that, but I don't imagine I would have a problem with those. But yeah, really enjoy these needles. Um, this pattern is one that I'm hoping to have done soon, and I really like it. Uh, because I was asked after Episode Zero came out how I make my patterns, I actually have a cross-stitch software that I use to chart everything out, and then I print it out and use the graphs I get from that to, you know, use my color work, since cross-stitch is square by square and stranded color work and, you know, fair isle and all that. Each square is a stitch, so you can easily translate that over from one medium to another, and for me, it works beautifully. Um, I, I don't foresee a reason why I would need to change to do something else at this point, but if I find a better, a better way, I might. But I'm not looking, because like I said, it's working perfectly for me right now. So, this is my Folly and Nonsense project bag. I will have a link to Heidi's site in the uh, doobly-doo. I love her bags. My Scottish Nightmare is in my other Folly and Nonsense project bag, and that is a nice wide wedge bag. I'm hoping to get some more of her bags, you know, come this autumn when I go to SAF, which is the Southeastern Animal Fiber Fair, and that's in Asheville, North Carolina every October. Yeah, October. Um, but but this year it's on a different week, and they're and they're moving it to a different section of of the the ground that they have everything on. So I'm not sure how that's gonna work. But we'll see. I mean, us knitters and spinners and crafters are a very resilient group, and we will adjust, and you know, we'll go with the flow, as we always do. So yeah, that's it for my knitting. Um, like I said, not too much going on because of this other project, but I'm, I'm happy with the work I have got done. Um, I got quite a bit on Josh's shawl done. Uh, I'm almost in the final section, so in the next two, three days I should be done with that and then back working on my Scottish Nightmare. And then this, this should be done soon as well. So on to spinning. Last week, I uh, showed you the bag of fiber from Into the World in the What's This Colorway on their classic base, which is a 100% superwash merino. And when when I brought it up to Ellie of the FO and Die podcast, she, she said, you know, how this was one of her favorite spins and she really, really liked it. And I can see why. The, the fiber drafts beautifully and, and the colors are just so bold. I really like how they're playing with each other. You can see this emerald and lime green, this orange, purple, and this pop of red. I'm really liking it because of the, the different color variances in each of the color blocks. You really get some really pretty play of color and barber pulling even in just the single. So I'm, I'm 
hoping that the finals game will be just as crazy and wild and beautiful as the singles are. Excuse me. Um, as you can see, I only have one bobbin done. Uh, because of this other project, I have not had a chance to spin the second bobbin, but I have it here, as you can see, these bright, beautiful, bold colors. See, tonal purples, the emeralds and the lime greens playing with each other, oranges and reds playing with each other. And I'm going, like I said, I'm going to do a fractal spin, so I'm going to split this second half lengthwise again and then spin both of those and hopefully that will create a really really nice play of color and not have any too long blocks of you know one predominant color i'm hoping to have this be as wild and crazy and beautiful as possible so yeah that that's it for spinning I don't have another spinning fiber picked out yet for when that's done but it might be one of my knitting color um, braids, but I'll figure that out later. I, I am thinking that I might try to spin something on my Spanish peacock spindle, which you can see here. It's really pretty. I got this a, a year ago almost from a friend as a gift, and I've done a, a little bit of sample spinning on this, but nothing too, too big or ambitious. Um, I might try to get some, are they called triples? I think I've heard, heard them called triples before. Where there's like little like half ounce bumps of fiber that you can spin. And, and that might be really good for me to start getting into spindle spinning. Because uh, when I started spinning, I started on a wheel. That's how I learned. Within a few months of learning, I got my Kromsky Sonata, which is in the mahogany colorway. And as you can see it, it's that gorgeous color. All my bobbins, my wheel, my nitty knotty are all the, the Kromskys in, in the same finish because they all have to match. I'm, I'm a bit OCD like that, but it, it works for me when I don't have a, a lazy Kate yet. So I haven't really been able to do a true three ply, but I'm hoping to get that sometime this year. That, uh, that'll be a really fun experiment for me to jump into and and an experiment with some three plies. So well, I'm excited to see where that goes. Um, that's it for those. Now for the project that has been kind of taking over everything else. Um, as I mentioned last week, I am a member of the Society for Creative Anachronism and we have an event coming up next, no, this weekend. Oh, this weekend. And when you come into site, which, which is where we have the event, you get a little token saying that you paid, you know, the, the, the fee to get in because we have to pay for the site and everything. And then if we're doing Feast, you get a little token saying that, yes, I paid for Feast as well. So um, Richard asked me to make the Feast tokens. And so I'll be I'm making 84 of these little flower knots. See if you can see that. It's a little blurry, so you can't really see the detail in them, but I'm using an imitation silk cord from Fire Mountain Gems, and I am using the Clover Flower Knot template to make them. You see that? Yeah, there we go. Flower Knot template, and that's from Clover, to make a bunch of these. Uh, the colors of our group are green and gold, so I'm making 43 green and 43 gold. Ah, you can see the knotting there much better. Um, it's a very slippery cord, so to, to stop them from slipping and coming undone, I have a little bit of super glue on the back. Uh, when I'm done making all of these, I am sewing them to little muslin bags for tokens and because you know, we're going to have games and, you know, stations where you can have fun activities and you get little tokens. So the bag will be for your tokens and then if you are doing feast, your bag will also have one of these little knot things. And it's a fun project. I, I really like it. They, they're beautiful. They're fun to make. 
they would be more fun to make if I had more time. But what can you do? It was one of those things that it was last minute. He saw that and was like, this would be a really cool idea. Can we do them? So I'm, I'm helping him make them and it'll be fun. And, and they'll be fine and, and they'll be gorgeous and everything. Just like I said, it's a bit taking over my life. The template looks like this. You can see there's a bunch of numbers and stars and hooks and latches and holes that tell you how to do what and knots happen. And each one takes about five to 10 minutes depending on how much zhuzhing I have to do. So not too bad, but I end up losing my focus and then it's like, ugh, I, and then I forget to make, well, no, I don't forget to make more. I get distracted. I get distracted by other stuff, you know. <laughs> I'm pretty sure we all have projects like that where we have to get it done, but we just can't keep our focus on it. This is that project for me right now. And I need to get it done. Um, like I said, I'm doing imitation silk cord from Fire Mountain Gems, and it comes on spools like this. I have the green and the gold. And I'm almost done. I only have 15 more gold to make. The green are already done. And then the knots are made. And then all I have to do is sew them to the, the little bags. So not too bad. Not too bad, just a little more work than I'd, than I'd like to be doing right now. And that is living in my Doctor Who Villains project bag. You can see like the Ood, the Cybermen, Daleks, Weeping Angels. I think the Centaurans are on there. And this is in my Stitched by Jessaloo project bag. See her little... Can you? Yes. See her little thing right there. All of her bags have this cute little bee zipper pool. Which I really like. And it's the same bee that's on her little logo right there. And I like it. It's a great project bag. It'd probably be good for Hexy Pups, Mitered Squares, um... Maybe barn raising quilt squares. Maybe socks or fingerless mitts. I'm not... You could probably do that easily. It's, you know, double thickness. It's got... Can you see the inside? Yeah. It's got a nice uh, space-themed inside because Doctor Who. Space, that's what you do. And I like it. It's a good project bag. I'm hoping to, once I get this project out maybe do my next pair of socks and you know see if they'll live in here i think that would be really cool get some more use out of that project bag than i have in the past um but yeah that's it for my crafting and stuff this week not too much in the way of knitting and spinning but a lot of work has been done um so yeah if you know if that's what you're interested in seeing then I'm, I'm going to get into talking to a, a little bit of real life stuff. So if that's not your cup of tea, then I will see you next week. And happy time zone to whenever and wherever you may be. And I will see you next week. All right. For those of you who are interested in what's been going on since last week. Oh, it's been crazy. Episode zero came out last Monday. And... Things just kind of exploded in a way I did not think would happen. I, uh, you know, I, I figured, you know, my friends would see it and, you know, it would be really cool. And so much more than I ever could have dreamed has happened. Like I said, we have a Ravelry group and I wasn't planning on having one of those for two, three, four weeks down the road when I feel like I've done enough to warrant one. But a few people have asked for one, so we have it now which is kind of bizarre and amazing in, in the most wonderful way possible. And, and, and I attribute that completely to, you know, the amazing support and, you know, outreach of my friends and how warm and amazing everyone has been. Uh, the podcasting community has really just opened their arms to me and said, you know, welcomed me into the fold and it's been a great experience 
and one I will definitely be continuing to explore and make the most of if I can. So thank you for allowing me into your homes and your computers and, you know, letting me be part of your daily routine. Uh, it's cold here though, like not as cold as up north because I live down in South Carolina, almost Georgia. Um, we're just starting to get the cold front coming in that Octavia? I don't really watch the weather when it comes on, so all I know is it's really, really cold for down here and rainy. The rain started coming in last night and there's a little bit of freezing rain. Um, so that's why I'm wearing my sweater. Normally it's not cold, it has been cold enough for sweaters this year, which is odd. Um, but I'm glad it is, so I can finally bust this thing out. I need to get a sweater shaver, though. It's starting to pill a bit, and it's driving me a bit batty. But, yeah. Thank you to all my friends who have, you know, reached out and said, Hey, you're doing a great job. Keep going. And, you know, let's see where this goes. And let's see what we can make happen. Maybe in a few weeks have a knit along or a craft along, um, something, you know, I, I want to do something to give back and interact more. And cause that's something I really enjoy from some of my favorite podcasters. So it's something I would like to, to do as well and to give back. So, um, a few specific, you know, shout outs to those who have really helped, you know, encourage and, you know, support and answer my questions when I'm like, Oh my gosh, what do I do now? So, you know, JB of JB's Fiber Podcast, Dave and Ellie from the Evo and Dive Podcast, um, Josh Ricks from the Sort of a Knitter Podcast, and Kim and Sam from Come Knit With Us. You guys have been amazing in a way that I, I can't describe. I, words cannot describe how amazing and supportive you've been, and thank you. And there are so many more who have, you know, reached out and and said welcome and, you know, offered advice and, you know, you know, saying, hey, you're doing a great job in supporting words. And if I went and, you know, thanked everyone personally, it just, it would take way too long because there are so many wonderful people who have, you know, reached out and I'm starting to sound like a broken record, but thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so that'll be it for this week. I am looking forward to episode two next week. I will be writing, you know, still getting better at writing show notes and stuff like that, but that that's all experience. And, you know, I, as I do this more, I'll develop a flow and, you know, what works for me, what doesn't work for me. So thank you again, and I will see you guys next week. Bye.